So it's a really cold morning in March right now. Um, spring is just around the corner and it is maple season. back here I'm in the uh, in the bush behind my neighborhood here and today I am uh, scouting out maple trees to tap I've been wanting to do this for years now and I just haven't got around to it um, but this year I finally uh, you know invested in a little bit of equipment and uh, um, I, you know set aside some time to, to do this so it goes without saying that the first thing you're going to need to figure out is which trees to tap. This is a sugar maple, the most commonly tapped species of tree in North America. Now there are other species of tree which you can tap as well. Uh, many other species of maples also produce delicious syrup including uh, silver maples, red maples, and I've even heard Manitoba maples. Um, you can also tap white birch and I've actually tried white birch syrup and it uh, best way to describe it is that it tastes a lot like molasses so um, not quite the nice mapley taste that uh, that you, you'd, you'd want to expect but uh, still not quite unpleasant so after I selected my trees I came back with all my equipment to uh, to drill and tap and place my buckets now I should mention right here that timing is the key. You want to uh, collect your sap at times when it's above zero during the day but below zero during the night. Uh, you drill about one and a half to two inches into the tree, put your spout in, and you're all set to go. All right, so I got all my tea, tree, teas. I got all my teas crossed and the eyes dotted. But I also have my trees tapped. So there's one there. One right there. Got one right over there. You can see between the trees. And then another one is way over here. And I'm actually going to maybe retap that one a little bit because uh, I don't feel that I got it in as much as it should be. But it's just over here. It's on a nice big tree. And what I did was I, uh, I tried to choose trees, like I could have chose trees that were all, all in a group together because there's lots and lots of uh, sugar maples in this forest. Look, there's another nice one right there. Um, I could have put them all together real, realistically, but uh, I wanted to do a bit of an experiment. See, uh, I did one uh, sort of at the edge of the forest, at the top of the hill, midway down the hill. And uh, in a bit of a rocky pile here as well. So um, let's see. Uh, let's see if any of the trees do better. You know, one does better than the other. I don't know. But I may try to retap this one a little bit because uh, I didn't get it in all that well. So I'll see if I can pull it out. <laughs> That's what she said. Okay, so. Uh... It's the first real day that uh, was supposed to be above zero today and uh, I think it's about three degrees above zero today and uh, I'm back at at, uh, at the trees that I I put the taps into uh, just check the buckets and you know I've never done this before so uh, you know I didn't know what to expect um, but uh, as you can see there's nothing in the buckets. It's completely empty. I've checked all four of the buckets and there's nothing in there. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe I have to wait a little bit longer or, or maybe uh, it takes a couple of days before the, the, the sap starts to run. I'll have to uh, Google it when I get home. Um, but I was hoping for something. Anyway. Okay, so this is my uh, second day checking on my, uh, my maple buckets here and uh, the, uh, the weather was uh, much more, uh, much better for, uh, 
for, for this app running. So I was uh, quite a bit more optimistic about today. It's, uh, it's about six degrees out right now. Last night it was pretty cold, it was well below zero. So um, I came out here and sure enough, you gotta check this out. Look at that sap. Look at it. Look at it coming out. It's almost a, a stream there. That's fantastic. And look how much I got already. I don't know if you can see that or not. But, uh, wow, that's awesome. I think my third time out. Uh, have a look at this. Completely full to the brim, flowing over. All right, that's, uh, that's what I like to see. That makes me happy. All right, let's get these buckets uh, emptied and... So as it turns out, all I needed was a little bit of patience. Uh, that week was perfect conditions, uh, very warm during the day, below zero at night, and every day, this is what I was coming to, full overflowing buckets. I was absolutely thrilled. Now it's time to take it home and on to the next step. For anybody who's uh, wondering how I get this sap back from way back from this uh, this little maple bush here back to the car, well, I'm not using any tractors or sleds or wagons or anything smart like that. No, I'm uh, I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. I'm not talking horses. <laughs> talking the human power. I don't know if you can see that. So here's what I did to get the sap from the back of the bush all the way back to my car. I took this 30 liter camping canoe barrel attached to the uh, backpack harness, filled it up with sap, and I hiked it all the way back to the car. And I tell you, this was no easy task. So after getting the sap back home, the next and most time consuming step you need to do is boil down the sap. Maple syrup comes at, from a 40 to 1 ratio from sap, which means for every 40 liters of sap you get, you only get one liter of maple syrup. So the boiling process takes a very long time. So once you've boiled off most of the water from your sap, you're going to have what's called near syrup. At this point, you're probably going to want to filter it and then pour it in a smaller pot and bring it inside to complete its final boil. The idea here is you want to complete its boil when it's 7 degrees above the boiling point of water. At my altitude, the boiling point of water is about 100 degrees, so I'm aiming for about 105 to 107 degrees Celsius. And once that's completed, I stop the boil, let it cool a little bit, and it's ready to jar. And here's the final product. Seems like a lot of work for such a small amount of maple syrup, but I tell you, it's worth it. One thing that I found very interesting was how different the syrup turned out between the beginning of the sap run and the end of the sap run. The syrup on the left was made from sap collected earlier on in the season. The syrup on the right was made from sap collected later on in the season. Notice how different the colors are. The taste and texture were also different, but equally delicious.